and then he stayed uh, sat on the board in my place. But that is kind of a personal choice, Bruce. If you wish to attend the meeting, all the meetings, that's fine. Um, or some, or just stay in touch with your delegates so you have an idea what's going on. So are you now the primary delegate or who is the primary delegate? I am not. Yes. David, David, Lawrence. David Lawrence. Okay. I believe, I believe his contact information is on the town website. <laughs> you know if it is, Dorinda? I do not know if it's on the website. Because um, I, I recently, um, going through the fiber website, sent an email to both of our Middlesex delegates um, and I didn't get a response from either. So I don't, I, I'm, I'm happy to try to reach out to them by phone or by direct email, but um, in any event, I'm happy to attend the meetings or not. Um, and I assume with this, I will get notice of meetings from somewhere. You will get, uh, yeah, uh, you'll get notice from uh, CV Fiber now has a new, has a, their first CEO um, and uh, a, a lot more organizational stuff in place. But yeah, they will, they will let you know, um, you know, when meetings are going to occur. There will also be some opportunity to serve on committees if that's something that, that interests you. Um, there was quite a bit of committee work going on. That's going to lessen as they're going into the construction phase of things. But in the early days, uh, when we had, there was no staff, uh, committees did an awful lot of the work to, to get to this point. But, okay. Um, okay, I will, um, Good. when's Sarah going to be back, Dorinda? She won't be back. I think she flies in next Tuesday, so I don't expect to see her in the office until Wednesday, okay. maybe, or Thursday. I'll, I'll see if I can contact um, whoever's the appropriate person at CV Fiber now. And okay, I think Liz is Bruce's. trying. Liz is trying to say something. Go oh, ahead, okay. Liz. Sorry, Liz. Yeah, I was just trying to introduce myself. Now, Bruce and I are neighbors, so we know each other. Um, oh. But what I wanted to say was um, that I, I thought Sarah said, and Phil, maybe I'm mistaken about this, but I thought Sarah said that David had actually not been attending meetings and that we were not having representation from Middlesex, whether it's because he's too busy or what, I don't know, because he's still hmm. officially the person, but yeah. I thought that's what she said last week or the, you know, the last time we had a meeting and that it might be actually a good idea for Bruce to go to those meetings if David, in fact, is really too busy to, to do this. So just, I'm just saying, we 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 did receive, I'm not sure, Liz, whether it was whether it came to me or whether it came to Sarah, but we got a, an email, I believe, from CB Fiber saying that we had not been represented, that, you know, nobody had been showing up for middle school. So that's a concern. And I guess maybe what we need to do, and I'm happy to do it, is, is, is reach out to David and make sure that he still wants to do it and see what's going on. And at the same time, Bruce, I'll put him in touch with, uh, with you. Failed. Liz? Yeah, I'm sorry. There was a little child that was running out after a ball and not watching. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I'm happy to serve in any capacity. I, you know, I, I feel well. I live in Middlesex, therefore my internet sucks, and I have, <laughs> I have an interest in making sure that we get better internet. Uh, Liz uh, told me that when the, the poll inventory was happening, that they had come and knocked on her door and said, you know, we're here at County Polls. We live um, a, a little bit up a, a long driveway, and I never saw anybody counting polls. That doesn't mean they didn't do it, but I have some concern um, that we're going to miss some people. So I'm, I, in any event, I'm happy to do this. I will go to meetings if that's what's required. Um, and I just need to know when they are and, you know, whether I should not go if David's going to go or however it works. Okay. But, yeah, Peter, so, if we, you we to know. Make sure CV Fiber has Bruce's name and contact information? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Okay, thank you. And I'll, uh, I'll reach out to David and see if I can find out what's, uh, what's going on. My pen just died. Um, hey, Bruce, while we're, we're right here, if you just send me a message in the chat with your email address, that would be really helpful. 
Okay, the, you're uh, Philip. You're assuming I know how to use the chat, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> I will give this a go. Oh, look, there it is. There. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Bruce, and thank you for agreeing to do this. It, it's going to be important for us to be uh, for us to be represented through this process. Yes, Steve. Uh, I'll make a motion <laughs> that we appoint Bruce. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> As as the alternate, and is there a second? Yeah, I'll second it. Okay, all those in favor of appointing Bruce Stevenson as Middlesex alternate representative to the CB Fiber Board, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? <laughs> Bruce, you're in. Officially in. Congratulations and Woo. thank you. This is almost like high school graduation. Yeah. Uh, almost. Except there are no monetary prizes. Yeah, what's, what's with that? I'm mostly pissed off that Liz has better internet service than, than I do, and she's like, you know, a half a mile away. You know, I, don't, I don't get this. Oh, you're just so jealous. I am. That's exactly right. <laughs> okay. Moving right along. And you're welcome to, uh, welcome to say, Bruce, if you're interested, but you're also welcome to depart if you'd like to depart. Yeah, I have to get somewhere else. And so thank you all. Nice to meet you. And I hope to see you at some point live and in person. All right. Okay. Nice to meet you both. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Okay. Considering a request from the E911 coordinator to designate as a private road a certain driveway at the bottom of Molly Supel Road and renaming PR3 to Picard Lane, action likely. I don't know anything about this. Well, I wondered this about that. Is coming from I, the, the cards? Is it, is it? I was hoping Sarah sent you guys something or Mitch is our E911 coordinator. And I thought maybe he would um, be here, but uh, neither one took place. Well, I would say let's let, if everybody agrees, let's, this can't be an emergency. Let's pass over it until we have just a little more information. Yep. That okay. Make Up here comes Mitch. Uh, there you Mitch. Go. Don't pass over. <laughs> hey, Mitch. Hi there. Your timing is impeccable. Well, thank you. We were just uh, just talking about this request uh, to rename the private road. Yes. Picard Lane, can you give us a little background? Well, um, yeah, I think it sounds like, um, uh, I forget which Picard it was, but um, it sounds like that request had been made prior to me becoming the 911 coordinator and for some reason it got sidetracked and I was requested to look back into that. I think one of the residents said, you know, I think I think because it's a, a poorly named PR3, they've been having trouble getting some mail deliveries and said, maybe getting an actual name on it will improve the delivery service. So I said, happy to see what I can do. So um, uh, we've all been try having trouble getting our mail as far as I right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was careful not to make any promises that that was going to fix the issue because I don't know that it will. Okay, but the bottom line is it's a request coming from the Picard family to rename it right. from PR3 to Picard Line. And I think everybody on that road is a Picard, so. Right. Yes, they are. Yeah, they are unanimous. Yeah. Where, okay. where exactly is this? Uh, you know where, um, oh, right the hairpin turn in Middlesex Center? It starts right by the old schoolhouse. Okay, so it's oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, there's yeah. Actually, what is the road that goes all the way through? Um, there's actually a maybe a class four road. PR three is actually just the spur off of that road that comes out onto Center Road. Correct. I think it's Bushy, Bushy Road. Bushy? Bushy Road, yes. Bushy Road. Thank you. That's the one. Yeah. So it looks like Google Maps calls it Prairie Three. PR three, yeah. They don't know what PR is, but yeah. <laughs> Wonder they don't get their mail. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, I don't see any. I don't see any reason why we wouldn't do that, and it's probably a lot better to have it 
clearly named. So yep. and, uh, people know what it is. I mean, what people are going to think is that Bushy Road, you know, PR, you're right. PR3 is the is the branch off of Bushy Road. So yep. I don't know how much that's going to help because all our mailboxes are at the bottom of Bushy Road. But right. It, 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 may, it can't hurt, though. I was just wondering now, is it, uh, is it Mitch as a coordinator that, that uh, goes to the post office? I know there was yeah. a push back here a few years ago to get all of these PR roads so that people would name them whatever, so that it would be a little clearer. But anyway, I mean, I'm all for this, but I don't know what the procedure is. Yeah, well, let me, I'll give you a quick a little bit of background on that. Um, Basically, what happens is when I get a request to either rename a road or name a new road, which is what the other one that we have is, um, what I do is check in with both the state E911 board and the local post office to see if either of them have any concerns or issues. And full disclosure, I have talked to my contact, Tyler Hermanson at the 911 board. He signed off on both of the road names, and I have emailed the Montpelier postal manager twice over the last few weeks, and in the last four days, I've stopped by the post office three times to see if I can get an audience with her, and I've had messages left with her every day, and today I also sent her a text message. I still haven't heard from her. One day, she was out delivering mail because they're shorthanded, and the other days, the rest of the staff didn't know where she was, but, um, but I basically I wonder I we don't get our mail. <laughs> yeah, well, I texted her and said, hey, this, and Tyler from the 911 board said that generally speaking, when the 911 board signs off on something, the post office agrees. Um, he and said then, he didn't really see a big concern, but I was really hoping to get an affirmative response from Vanessa, the manager at the post office, but I did not get a confirmation. So if you guys decide that you'd rather wait, I can understand that. I kind of would like to get it done, but oh. I understand that, you know, we got to do, if we have to follow procedures, we have to follow procedures. And if we need an affirmative response before we, you guys are comfortable doing anything, I guess I understand that. I don't think so. Randy? Uh, it sounds like everybody that lives on this road's last name is Picard, and correct. I'm guessing that nobody that lives there objects to the to the naming of the That's road. Correct. They were unanimous that this is what they want to do. So you said there were two roads that we needed. To yes, need? there is also a. Currently, it's a private driveway at the bottom of Valley Supel. There are two addresses on that road and there's been a subdivision that has been approved for construction of a new home and that landowner needs an address and the state policy is that when there's three assignable addresses on a private driveway it has to become a private drive or a private road so instead of just being a driveway it's supposed to be called something so where is that exactly oh let's see um I could look up who the owners are who live on. Uh, hang on one second. I can. I have a file. I can tell you who the people are that live on that road. Peter. Yes. Seidel used to live up there. And then Bob Lumbra lives at the bottom. That's one of them. And, and somebody from Massachusetts is building that 10 acre that Eric sold before he left. Yeah, that's, yep. Where is the, where is the road, Victor? First right hand turn on Molly Supel as you're headed towards the town garage. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Deep in a bear's face and slipper in a Christian's eyeball. Yep. Yeah, it's um, yep. Matthew Stiles and Teal Church are one of the couples, and then Janet Green and Robert Lumbra. And the new guy is Ben Tepper or Tepler, I think. So, anyway, um, and they've requested a name of Black Bear Lane for that road. And they all agree? Yep, they're all fine with that. And same thing, uh, Tyler, my guy from the 911 board, he said they're actually in Waterbury and Stowe are a lot of bear or black bear roads, but he feels like that's far enough away from Middlesex that it didn't seem to him to be a big concern. They said, yeah, I've seen worse. So he says, I'm fine with it. 
Well, I guess my recommendation would be that as long as the 911 board says it's okay, that we uh, we go for it, and uh, if somehow it doesn't work, we'll deal with it when that happens. But yep. yeah, I think and, and, the, and... I think the key what I what I remember uh, back when Marika was doing this, which she would always say, if the 911 board says it's okay, it's okay, and the post office will go along. So that same thing Tyler around. told me. Okay. So was someone willing to make that motion to name those uh, to name those two roads as described by Mitch? <clears throat> Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion that uh, we name that uh, driveway Black Bear Road on uh, the bottom of Molly. I think we're going to call it Black Bear Lane. Black Bear Lane, Black Bear Lane. okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Private Road 3 be renamed to Picard Lane. Correct. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second. Thank you. Okay, all in favor of the motion, I'm not going to restate all of that. We're, we're naming those two roads as, as Mitch described. Yes, Randy. I was just no, affirmative. We're, we're the oh, you're, you're ahead of the curve. Okay, all in favor. Aye. 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 Was that you that seconded it? I did. Okay. Still did. Thanks. Yes. Yep, thank you. Okay, now on to everybody's favorite subject. Reviewing and updating the town personnel policy to reflect, to reflect changes RE safety boot policy made at April 19th, 2022 and select board meeting and to address health insurance premium coverage for spouses of town employees action likely. And uh, she sent out a copy of the uh, revised personnel policy. The changes are on page five and page six. Before you get too far into this, I need to point something out. Okay. Um, she has at the top of the personnel policy, effective May 3rd, your um, insurance policy was not effective until July 1, the new fiscal year. So I don't know if you want to pass over this whole thing or just accept it all effective July 1 or what you want to do. Um, and also Steve found a small, I guess you would call it a typo in section um, 20, 19 or 20. 19. In section 19, where it said safety approved footwear, C section XX, we're changing XX to section 17. Yeah, perfect. Or 19. Okay. 17. So, 17. 17. Yeah. So I don't know what you wanna do, but you did not, uh, the when you passed the uh, policy, it was supposed to be effective July 1. Both of these things? Well, no. Um, <laughs> The boot policy was just a clarification. It really wasn't a change. It's how you wanted it. Um, the wording that was used to change it. Yeah. And, but they certainly, we did not, um, it was part of the budget discussion as of July 1, where you would start paying spousal coverage. We can just address that in the motion, correct? Right, that's what I was thinking. So that we can just adopt the the new policy with the effective dates of like that uh, health insurance as of July one, but you can still leave that May third date on there as far as when we revised the. Well, that doesn't say revised at the top. It says effective. So if you want to change the top, the very <laughs> third line says effective May third. And both of these items are in there. Oh, I see what you're saying. But I, I think it sounds like, and maybe I'm oversimplifying, but I think in the motion, if we, if we approve the changes with, with that effective date being July one, we don't need to push this off. We could uh, adopt the policy change with the motion making it effective July one. Right, because the booth thing isn't going to affect anybody anyways. Um, 
because everybody's hire date is after July 1. So it affects no one I at this point in time. Uh, I think yeah. that's I think that's the way to do it. So that was your motion, Randy? I, I will make the motion to <laughs> accept the uh, the changes as they stand with the effective date being listed as July 1, 2022. No second. Okay, thank you, Steve. Um, okay, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? We have can, done it, I believe, now. Okay, can I bring something else up while we're talking about the insurance? I don't know if we bring it up here or later, but I was contacted um, by Shane this week, and he had been reviewing um, some of the previous minutes, and he wanted to know why he didn't get the bonus as opposed to why he didn't get the bonus when the other two people with family members got the bonus. Um, I told him that I would bring it up. Um, I thought he might come to the meeting to, you know, plead his side of the case. Um, my understanding was that it was given as a bonus, as a, an employee retention thing. And um, I do know with uh, hiring the bookkeeper and the assistant clerk position that we were counter offering something she was promised from her previous employer. Um, but the minutes didn't clarify anything really. I thought, am I, am I wrong about this and, and help me out? Because I remember we talked about this at the time and I thought, Shane didn't need spousal insurance. No, that's not the case. No, that's not the case. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry, when you say bonus, do you mean getting paid for what you're not using? Like if you're not, like how we no. pay people not to use their, if so they don't use we, their insurance? We gave um, Cheryl the um, bonus when she came on. Then Sarah came to the board and said, it's not fair that the assistant clerk is making more than what I'm making. And she wanted to, she brought it up at the same time that she would like to see the uh, town pay for the spousal insurance. And there was quite a discussion on it. And Sarah was not in on that. She backed out when we were talking yeah. about it quite a bit. And I think those are the minutes that you took, Liz. And um, so when all was said and done, it was decided to give Sarah a $5,000 bonus. But in some cases, it was talked about whether or not it was to cover the spousal insurance. Um, there's a lot of conversation if you refer to the minutes of November 9th and December, the one after for December, um, where it talked about whether or not we violated the personnel policy or anything. But I believe it was when it was done, there was nothing in the motion that said that it was be, being given towards insurance, that it was just it was, we were it giving was that bonus. Change. It was to cover the, to cover their cost of their contract, was a bonus to cover the cost of their contribution for their spouse to be on our insurance, right? Well, the one initially for Cheryl was not that. That was really a hiring bonus because her employer was giving her a retention bonus. Right. Mm -hmm. And that was how that one came about. Then I think it got convoluted because Sarah was asking about um, spousal insurance. So, um, so that I think there was no, um, there was no clarity as to really if it was being named a retention bonus and a hiring bonus, or if it was truly 
uh, you know, it wasn't part of the motion, let's put it that way. Can I ask a question? So the stuff that Sarah just sent us a few days ago in preparation for this meeting has the highlighted section about spousal insurance, that this is, it says, the town of Middlesex pays 100% of the monthly health insurance premium for coverage selected by the select board each year for a town employee and his, her spouse. Right. The town of Middlesex pays 50% for the premium of dependents. Is this new? It yeah. was. Uh, it was what, what we was, just passed. It was right. What was, right. So, it was, so, what was, uh, this is cleaning up the mess with those with those bonuses, and we knew we were going to have to deal with this. Right, Wait, I know. That's what I thought. So, but let me just finish my 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 thought. Right. So, okay. what Randy just said is that this is all actually only effective July one. That's 2022. What, right. And that's that's what the the conversation and the budget built out was effective for this next fiscal year. OK, so what Shane is saying, so that I understand this properly, is that Shane feels like, how come my spouse isn't getting how come I'm not getting extra money to pay for my spouse's insurance? Yes. <laughs> for this past year, he's going to get it next year. Right, right. right. Okay, and were there other spouses that we did this for, but he was the only one that we didn't? So no. there's only three people that had the spousal plan. Okay. And can you and say who I those think, three people are or not? Um, well, we know probably, who they are. It's the bookkeeper, the Sarah and Shane. Oh, yeah. But I think the okay. the confusion all comes in where Cheryl's was a hiring bonus to match what her current employer, right. because the current employer countered after she accepted the job. Yeah. Then she came back and turned down the job because her boss gave her a bonus. And in addition to the bonus that she was going to get, she was they were going to change her benefits they were giving going to give her more time off and they were going to talk about having the spousal insurance so that's when sarah came on board and yeah. said okay you know this isn't right so i think sarah's was more or less she was i remember part of the discussion being I'm well sure. sarah's been with us for 10 years almost 10 years you know, um, we can't let a new person being making out better than her. And that was where it kind of all came about. So is Shane's wife on our insurance now? Yes. And he's paying half the cost? Yes. And how much is that? Um, it was, the premium was, uh, well, it's gone up as of January 1. Um, it's like 300 and some dollars, I want to say. So he's paying, I'll, I'll be with you in a minute, Randy. So he's been paying $150 a month towards her insurance. Right. Roughly. Since, I mean, give, her, roughly. give or take. Yep, give or take. You know, since you did this hiring thing in November or whatever. Right. So, and I'm not saying we should do this, but if we were to say that, okay, we agree, will make you whole, we would need to give him a bonus of roughly seven months of $150. So that's basically a thousand bucks, right? I mean, something Plus like- pay for his, the rest of his months. I mean, I, I, Jesus. I, it's, oh, it's, can it's I- Yeah, we get ourselves in trouble. We knew we were getting ourselves in trouble on this. Yeah. On this can I, yes, can right? I just go back to the meeting minutes that, that you know, back when this was discussed, it was it was clear in here that there was a recognition that that uh, the cost increase was were for two employees. That there were three employees that uh, potentially were taking the insurance. Um, it looks like there was a pretty significant, and I remember a significant conversation around um, I, being identified as sign on bonuses. Uh, for employment and uh, retention. So there was conversation around that. Um, 
and the, it looks looking back at the meeting minutes and I would I everybody should have a chance to go back and look at these but it looks like it was it was understood that only two out of the three were going to have any compensation because it was a bonus for retention and for um a hiring bonus and that any future changes would be in this next fiscal year right. um that's exactly so, what i remember randy okay so i mean that's it, it seems at least on on <clears throat> my take on this is that um it seems like there was a clear understanding that we would only we would not be moving forward paying for anybody else's health care until july 1. i think that's right Randy, do you know when those minutes were? So I there's a Dorinda referenced a couple of them, and I'm looking at right now the December 7th meeting minutes. Um, like there's the the last sentence of the of the paragraph that's talking about this. It says Dorinda and Peter both noted premiums are still being deducted from paychecks of those employees with spouses. However, two out of the three are being compensated with cash with cash bonuses. Um there was a uh, Dorinda asked for clarification on the annual contribution for married HSA. It looks like there was a fairly lengthy conversation about what it would do to the budget. Um, uh, and then she also referenced the next set of town or the meeting minutes because so it was talked about over a couple of different meetings. Um, anyway, uh, that's I. I think that it would be beneficial to read the meeting minutes and establish, you know, I remember the conversation uh, to some extent. Um, and, and that was my understanding coming out of this and reading these meeting minutes. Um, that's where I was going with the effective January or uh, July one in the previous motion that that was just made. Um, That's my that's my take on it. Jane, we can see the rafters, but we can't see you. Well, I'm here. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Oh, we're good. Good, good. We're we're just discussing this uh, this health insurance issue, which I guess you brought up. Uh, Peter, can you just re repeat that? Like, I'm looking at these minutes from the December 7th, and it says, repeat again about this violation of the personnel policy by basically paying 100% of the health insurance premium for the spouses of two employees via mid-year bonuses. What is, what? Well, I think, I, th I mean, Mike, I, I, I do not have the minutes in front of me, um, but you know, I think what I was trying to say is, and I remember about two thirds of the conversation that we weren't violating our personnel policy because we were giving discretionary bonuses to two of our employees. Okay. So I don't think we, I don't think we violated our personnel policy. Okay. I mean, the question is, and I guess, I guess what you're, you're wondering why you didn't get the same bonus, Shane? That's right. Just because when um, another meeting we had in November, might even been the end of October, I think we were in executive session when we were talking about a hopeful future employee and his demands, it was brought up that if one person got a bonus, to pay for spouse's health insurance and everyone else that worked for the town that had spouse had to have the same bonus. So that, that was my question. I don't, think that's, I don't think that's necessarily true. Whether that was said at the time, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you're what you're what I think the intent was that anybody else, their spouse would be covered and covered in full as of July 1st at the this year which is coming right up but i agree it seems a little uh and i don't know i don't know why we did it the way we did it i mean we were frankly trying to deal with with 
hiring situations and we made the decision to give those two people yeah. bonuses. That's basically what it boils down to, I think. In Cheryl's case, she wouldn't have come to work for us if we hadn't given her the bonus. And in Sarah's case, uh, it was that the assistant clerk was gonna be making more money than she was. <laughs> She's been here 10 years. Um, so that was our, that was our Band-Aid. And uh, <coughs> you got left out in the cold, I guess, is the way to describe it. I don't know how else to describe it. I'm oh, sorry, I, I just want a clarification. I was going back through the minutes over the past year, just reading so through, making sure I haven't missed something. And I just saw that, so I figured I'd ask. I'm just well, curious. Well, what we've done, what we've done tonight is the personnel policy has been amended and effective July 1st, which is when the new policy will be effective. Spouses of all town employees will be covered. So that's done. I guess what I would suggest is uh, that we all review the minutes and then make a decision or if we if we choose to do anything about this to uh to benefit shane because i haven't i haven't read over the minutes does that make so, sense yeah yeah but i think the way that it, it um the way that it um sugared out is this correct dorinda is that we didn't actually pay for their insurance. We gave them money and they're, they were still having money deducted and probably still are till July 1 for their spouses. Yeah. Is that correct? correct. Yes. 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 yes, that's correct. Yeah, you know, I, th I think the difference there, if, if you're giving somebody a bonus, you can't tell them how to spend that money. They right. can choose to spend it to offset a payment right. that they're making exactly. like for health insurance or they could put right. into retirement or whatever we can't that so that's really different than a benefit yeah. uh, so we offered yeah. uh either sign on bonus or just a negotiation to hire someone and then really a retention bonus i'm not even sure it was a bonus it's an adjustment based upon how long that person had worked for us but you know it's yeah and i think yeah. that's what we tried to make a distinction these are bonuses. You spend it how you want. If you want to buy additional benefits with that, you can. But the benefit piece is the is the separate piece that we looked at and and changed tonight, effective July one. Um, and and that, that being a benefit, anyone who has a spouse can choose to take that benefit. So. Can I also get a clarification? And this might be something that we actually. <laughs> need to clarify in our personnel policy, um, or at least state it in writing so that we're not coming back three months later having this conversation again, um, is that it says there that we will, we will reimburse an employee $150 a month if they don't take our insurance and can prove that they have their own insurance. I think we need to add we will not reimburse for the spouse insurance if they choose to not take our insurance. No. No, you can't. Why? Right. Because the employee has to be signed up for the benefit. Spouse can get, get the spouse. Employee. No, yeah. I know. <laughs> but I'm saying, let's say Shane's wife gets a job and gets a cheaper option and wants her own insurance. We don't want to reimburse him for, her, for him. Oh, not. That's not what that reimbursement is. Yeah, no. I know. I realize that. Do we need to make clarify that clear? Yeah. Do you mean to sure. make sure it's perfectly clear? It's perfectly clear that we are not reimbursing right. a spouse for not taking our insurance because right. now we are saying we will reimburse you if you don't take our insurance. And we are also where's, saying we're going to pay 100% of your spouse's insurance. So what we Where's that language, take, Liz? It's in that yellow highlight that that she um, that she sent us, um, and I just think so that we avoid these conversations of someone coming and saying, "How come I'm not getting reimbursed for my? How come my wife isn't getting reimbursed?" It doesn't say that anywhere that we need to say that. I agree, Liz. Yeah, I, I agree. It, it, we don't need to revisit this again because there's misinterpretation. Yeah, it's on page um, five. Okay. And it says, on my thing, yeah. Yeah, whatever. It's on page, yeah. And so 
I would just add a sentence that says the town will not reimburse spouses or children that are not. No, I think, it's, I think what it should say is the town will pay $150 per month as health insurance compensation if any employee chooses not to take our health insurance, period. Yeah. yeah. Isn't yeah. that what it says? No. It doesn't, it doesn't have that. It, it just says that the town, if, if they have other coverage in force. No, it does. Well, they have to. Up, Legally, up they top. have to have it. Yeah. They, they actually don't anymore, Liz. Okay. Um, but if you look at the, the sentence that starts, I'm going to read it out loud here. If an eligible employee chooses not to take the health insurance coverage and has other coverage in force, the town will pay $150 per month as health insurance compensation to the employee. Right. So that covers so it right clear. there. I mean, I, okay, just don't come to me crying when someone comes in six months and I starts mean, crying about their spouse not getting it. We can rewrite the, we can rewrite the policy again next month, whatever. But hold on, I, I want to say something else, though. I think we should keep it that they have other coverage in force because what we don't want to do is have people not take health insurance. That's what it says, I know. I'm just saying Randy says it's, that used to be a requirement and it's not a requirement it's anymore. Requirement. But I think that we want to make sure people have coverage and not be reimbursing them so that they don't have to pay for health insurance and make more right. money. We want them insured is what I'm saying. We want them yeah. to have health insurance. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so, um, so, and I would just add one more thing and just to sort of close this a little bit um, for, for Shane's purposes, if he's still on, is that like, I feel like this was a specific thing for, um, for retention and, and, um, and a brand new hire. And this wasn't an across the board um, situation. There just happened to be three people that only fall into that category and it feels like you were left out, but I really, I personally don't see it that way, that there was, um, that, that therefore um, we need to make sure that this third person also gets this benefit. I think these were two very unique situations um, for uh, the situation that we were faced with and that we um, said moving forward as of the next fiscal year, we will play, pay for the, for the, spouse um on the plan as well so okay. that's my only final comment on that okay so a quick question and help me out here did we vote on amending this personnel policy yet or not mm -hmm. we, did. Yes, yes. we did we did okay good so what we're going to do is review minutes and then bring up this shane's concern at our next meeting that makes sense to everybody. Yes, Durant. Yeah. Um, I also want to, while you're considering this, I think you also need to consider um, the agreements that we hire people under. And in some cases, we have hired people accruing a different amount of vacation time that we don't go back and change the people who are working for us on how they accrue their vacation time. These, you know, so it's not, I mean, you have to look at each individual case as to how, you know, what we're hiring people at. It's all part of hiring negotiations. You're talking about how much vacation they get? Right. How they accrue it? Well, both. So yeah, in two I mean, instances, like, in, in two instances when, policy, when we, in two instances, we hired people at a higher vacation rate than we normally do when somebody starts. We did not go back to the other employees that had been working for us for five years, up to under five years, and adjust how they accrued their vacation. So, I mean, I think you really have to look at how you're doing this because otherwise your your problem's going to continue to snowball right. yeah so what you're saying is that was a hiring negotiation it certainly was with cheryl yeah right no i understand yeah i i agree i agree with that because at, at 
any individual time, depending on the candidate coming to us, um, they may have negotiations. And if, if at that point in time, the board is willing to, to accept their terms to, to get them to onboard, it, it shouldn't mean that we have to go adjust everybody else. Right. And so you've got to, I mean, so these benefits kind of go all different ways. Yeah. Well, I can tell you over the, over the years and not just in the town of Middlesex, it was, I'm not saying impossible, but almost impossible to hire somebody who had, let's say three weeks vacation and all they were going to get was one week or two weeks or whatever. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work. So, you know, I don't know whether we need to amend our personnel policy to say from time to time we may do that or we just accept the fact that we have to violate our personnel policy to I think that's not, I think that comes in negotiations. Right, that's not a viol that's not a violation. That's a negotiation of hiring somebody. Oh, I agree okay. with that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can I also suggest that we um you know, on a yearly basis, and maybe this is Sarah's, or maybe Dorinda's job actually might make more sense, is that you give, um, like my husband gets one every year, basically a letter saying, like, thank you for your continued employment. This is what you are making. It usually happens like when it's like cola time or something like that. And it shows you what you're making. And it also puts a value of the benefits um, that you're earning so that you can see your bottom line package. I think it's really important mm -hmm. that people are reminded that they're not just making 50,000, they're making 80,000 um, right. with all of their benefits. Um, and, and I just we, think it's a good practice. We've done that before um, when we've talked about hiring people and people asking for raises. We've taken their and given them a printout of their benefit package. Do you and do that for, do you, do you uh, calculate that every year when you do the town report anyway? Like at that point, if we, if, if you said, okay, when I do the town report, all that information is going to be readily available. I'm just going to print off some letters and mail them. Is that. I mean, I could pull it from there as we're doing the budget. Um, but what I've gone through, because each person is a little bit different as far as like the highway crew, they get a boot allowance that doesn't, you know, somebody else in town doesn't necessarily get. Um, so we would have to just, you know, it would have to be tweaked, but it is something that can be done. Is that something you think you have the capacity to do, Dorinda, or that would be a Sarah thing? No, it would all have to come from numbers from the payroll and that type of stuff. The insurance. I wonder if it sounds like a like a July one thing, or when they get like a raise. Isn't that a July uh, one thing too? Yeah. What I yeah. can do is see how long it takes me to do one. I've got like a handful of them done already. So once you get the template in place, all you'd have to do is update the hourly rate every year. And that yeah. would be able to take care of it. Yeah. Yeah. I would tell you it's probably a good idea because I, I agree. I mean, I've implemented that at places uh, where I had that kind of responsibility. And it was, did it cause, <laughs> cause some people to appreciate their employment a little more when they see the whole thing? Yeah. I mean, retirement, right? All that stuff into health insurance, life yeah. insurance. I don't know what else. We have. Like the employer's portion of retirement yes. went up quite a bit this year where the employee's portion didn't change. Right. Okay. Well, I think that would be a good idea if we can do it, but let's, let's, we're getting close to the end of the year. We make, maybe can talk about it again. You can think about it, Dorinda, and see if it's something that's feasible. No, I'll do one up and see how simple it goes. Great. Thanks, Dorinda. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, highway Department, report on update of erosion remediation on Baldock and Tangletown roads, action not necessary, and approval of the annual financial aid to highways, action likely. Is this you, Shane, or Victor? Either one. We've we done from 
Tangletown intersection, Tangletown Bulldog Golden intersection, up Tangletown. Tangletown's all done. Hydro seeding in stone. Um, and we're down to it's Jamie's nephew's driveway right now. So we probably have, I don't know, seven or eight loads of stone left to put in a couple of ditches, clean a couple of ditches back out where some mud slid and uh, hydro seed that and Bulldog Road will be done. Probably a couple, three more days. Right. Right. Thank you. Shane, I would like to tell you that I saw Jamie Bulldog yesterday and all he could do was sing your praises. And he said, if there's anything <laughs> you ever need me to do to tell you how great J uh, Shane is, call me. <laughs> I was like, we know Shane is great. And thank you for telling us again. <laughs> there you go. He says you're very easy to work with and he very much appreciates your leadership. Well, in between doing that over there, trying to grade on the nice days, got people want potholes patched on bridges and on tire and on dirt. I mean, we're gaining. Next week is going to be a good week. So we should be all caught up on all grading by next week. Look, great. And where are we? Uh, where are we on our paving uh, project plan? I think well, as soon as we get done bulldog um from that the machine move to center road peel up the pavement from uh where the pavement ends back to mccullough we got two culverts to change there and that's the worst part of the pavement and then there's some ditching needs to be done on it and some other culverts that need to be changed but i think you're gonna have to hire those out they're a lot deeper and i don't know if our machine can do it or not and I think you have to have a trench box and we don't have one of those. Right. But when, so. we, do we, do we know when we're, when we complete that, the, the paving can commence, they are waiting for us. Um, they want to pave it. I think it's still, cause we initially had talked to August, um, the beginning of September time to let the culvert settle and oh. Hutchins is doing Route 2, and they're doing from Route 2 to our line on Santa Road, and they want to build to pave the whole thing at once. And I believe EJ told me that was in August that they were going to be paving that section, but i got to find out from him again, but I'm pretty sure that's what he said. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, and I'll get the price on it make sure the price went up a little bit not as much as i thought it would so he's hoping it'll have a chance to drop too with the markets the way they are so yeah but that's where we stand on that stuff right now okay victor anything from your see no, I just got a couple uh, couple calls uh, today, uh, and I understand why we wouldn't want to do it because we're going to rip it out. But we have a couple holes down there by Aiden Kroll's old place and uh, Cheryl and uh, Jane's place uh, before you get to Brook Road that have some pretty a couple deep uh, potholes. Is that something that uh, we're gonna put some stay mat in those? or gravel just oh. to sustain it until we get there and rip it up. I really don't yeah. want to put cold and rip it back out. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Just keep an eye on if the gravel starts to get out of there, just put a little more in there. Yeah, that's what I figured we'd start doing. I mean, how much, how much is those cans of uh, pavement you mix up? I don't know. I've never priced one of those cans. I don't think I, you're, I don't think your your stay mat's going to stay in there very long. It's just my opinion, but we don't have to discuss it now. All right. Well, yeah, we'll figure out something. Okay. We can fill it up mostly with gravel and then top it with some cold patch. Just to. Yeah. There you go. That might be the way to do it. 
I mean, the problem is, as we all know, once you start fixing potholes, there are potholes everywhere. <laughs> oh, Jesus, yes. We got a lot to fix on Shady Real, too. Right. Right. Any questions, anybody, board members? I I have a quick question. Um, in I was looking for the warranty on the JD, on the John Deere. Um, because we just paid a repair bill when I know we paid part of it, even though it was under warranty, but we don't have in the office um, what the warranty covers, or is that something you have, Shane? I do believe I do. If not, I will get it. Yeah, it and we also cover, signed um, an extended warranty. Road. Right. Um, it doesn't cover coming out on the road. It covered all the parts, but not the, and it covered the guy's labor, but that was just what it cost them, how much they charge per hour to come on a road call. And that was that one night I missed that board meeting. Because it couldn't so, be driven back to the shop. It looked like they pay, you, we paid for both labor and um, the road call. That's why I was wondering. No, as he put it, because I asked him and he said he put the labor on. It was just how you pay so much a mile and then the labor is how much the truck costs to get there, something to that effect. Because he was in well, Essex or Williston and came down. Then they, I think you have to pay till he gets back to his house or back to the shop. So I think most of that was mileage is my understanding because I called them up on it. So it sounds like you're saying that we're paying for the traveling labor, but once he's on site actually working on the machine, they're not they're not charging us for the time he's actually at our shop fixing it. And then right. once he gets back in the truck, he's on travel labor, I'll call it. And that's what we're paying for. Yep. It'd be good just to have a copy here. It, it would be good just to have a down. copy if we could. All right. I'll get you one. Okay. We have the annual financial plan for the town of Middlesex Highways. Um, So this shows our expenses and the state's, well, it shows the state's contribution and the town funds, basically. Anybody have any questions about that? A motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay. Thanks, Steve. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Um, Victor, I don't know uh, how much of a hurry you're in, but it would be nice if we could uh, let Dorinda do her report and then go into executive session, if that's all right with you. Sure. It doesn't matter because I've got to be here for other business and all too. You can just, somebody can okay. take over. All right, so let's let's uh, let's just follow the agenda then, and uh, we need a motion to go into executive session. And the executive, whoop, just a minute. The executive session should include uh, Shane and Victor. Uh, and I guess for convenience, I'm going to suggest we include Dorinda because I don't know how we'll. <laughs> How we'll get in touch. I suppose we can call you on the cell phone, Dorinda, and tell you to. Well, all, no, all you got to do is move me out. I can make do. Liz can become the host or something, and then sure. just call me I'll back in back when in. it's done. Okay. All right. Okay. So who for who made the motion to go into executive session? I'll make that motion to go into executive se session <laughs> under the grievance uh, clause. In the second. And and uh, to invite Victor uh, and Shane as well. Yeah. Oh, second. Seconded by Steve. Okay. You all set? 
Okay. Yeah, well, let me, wait a minute. I got a. Whoa, 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 wait. Yeah, wait a minute. And tell me again where I remove people from the waiting room. She's over to more. Once I okay. turn it over, you'll go to um, more. You okay. go over their name and you put them in the. Okay, right, 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 right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we have to vote on the motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, we're in. So. All right. I'm putting. No, we're not in. I have to put Dorinda into the waiting room. Okay, no, no, no. I'm waiting to see her disappear. I have to put my friends from Orca in the waiting room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put in waiting room. Yes. Okay. And I'm awesome. back on record. Okay. I'm sex is the host now. So right. it should reflect that we have we have come out of executive session and we are taking no further action. Okay. Got it. Okay, Dorinda, treasurer's report. Well, I passed on the um, latest budget status report. Mm -hmm. And that is only through the end of um, last month. So that does not include any of the, the payroll or the APs for tonight. So that's another $28,000. So when you say last month, you mean April. This includes April. everything. April. Yeah. Right. But it yeah. doesn't include tonight's order. Right. right. So, um, so this is like almost 85%. And then we've got this on there now. Mm. Yeah. Going to be tight. Well, I think if it's going to be over. I don't oh, think it's yeah. going to be tight. I think it's going to be over. Okay. Wishful thinking it's going to be tight. Right. Right. <laughs> so, so here's, and we don't have to make a decision about this tonight, but if in fact uh, it's a legitimate use of ARPA funds for some of these extra expenses that we incurred, um, we should consider reimbursing ourselves before the end of the year. It's gonna be confusing if we take the money in the next fiscal year. At least I think so. I don't know what you would think, Dorinda, but I would think we should try and take it in this year. Well, if we're gonna use ARPA funds, um, we've got until next March, technically, to use it. So oh, I understand that, but I mean, just just in terms of making our budget appear in balance, right. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's actually going to. Yeah, I, I don't. You know that, and that brings up a good point: how we actually post all that. So, right. Well, it'd be. I think it'd be unbudgeted revenue, wouldn't it? Yep. Yeah, well, it would go against that ARPA money. So right now we have a grant, you know, line item that says ARPA funds. So I think it would just be an offset to the ARPA funds, which it's all going to go to the bottom line when all is said and done anyway. Yeah. And right now it's just a single line item. The question is, does it make sense to consider making an entry before the end of the year? And we've got some time to think about that. Mm -hmm. And I would like you to think about it. I mean, whatever you whatever you recommend is going to have a lot of carry a lot of weight, but I just, uh, I like the idea of having the, the numbers, uh, balance out a little more closely than they're going to right now. Yes, Randy. Um, so I had a, I had a quick look at it. Um, and I have some more questions than this one, but this is the only one that jumps in my head right off the top. Um, I was looking at, uh, the line item for mud mitigation, Dorinda, and I think that was it was in the realm of twenty thousand dollars or something like that when I when I looked at it. But in in our previous meetings, I think the numbers that were pushed out verbally were somewhere between fifty and seventy five thousand that we were spending with all the gravel that we were pulling in and and whatnot. So is there a, a classification issue with how we're coding things? And and I'm wondering if it has an impact in you know, this, this potential uh, money coming from the state to help towns with mud mitigation. If it's not in that line item, does that, does that create problems for us down the road? Well, we create, first of all, we're posting it to however Shane has coded it out. We don't put the coding on the bills. 
So if he posts it to gravel, it goes to gravel. If he posts it to mud mitigation, it goes to mud mitigation. Um, we don't know where the product's going when we see a bill. So, but it's easier to, if it's truly being used for mud mitigation and we're filing a grant or something to get that money back, it's certainly a lot easier to go through and just pull up that one account number rather than going through all the gravel bills and that type of stuff. Yeah, that's a lot of work, isn't it? It's a lot of work, Steve. <laughs> and I did mention this, I don't know, two, three meetings ago. And my understanding was that he was keeping a folder, I guess, at his office of putting everything in it. And I suggested we start, um, you know, not only just the bills themselves, but we should be recording the hours spent on doing it Labor. and the equipment yes. usage. And uh -huh. so, but nothing has come to the office. And, you know, if something was coming, if we got something at the office, we would just start a file on that and it would all be there. It's, but I don't know what he's doing. But it, it sounds like we can go back. Like if this grant, if this grant comes down, then it sounds like we can go back and reclassify uh, things specifically that'll be covered underneath that grant. It's not gonna, it, it's not gonna put us at risk of not being able to capture the full value of that. No, we can always go back and yeah. figure out what went to what. And um, but it's how. You, if anybody ever wanted to look back into the records. You know, it would be it would be beneficial maybe to know we really didn't spend X number of gravel just for regular road work, that it was part of a mud mitigation situation. So it is better to have it classified correctly if that's truly what it's being used for. Yeah. And I think the other thing that came up in my head when I was looking through was I and we had this conversation prior, but the culvert budget was like out of sight compared to what what we've spent versus what they budgeted. And and I know that we had some some culvert stuff that Shane was just talking about in the paving. So it would just, you know, uh, if if grants can cover that kind of stuff, it seems like it would be more appropriate to throw it in the paving section for whatever value that is. But again, if it doesn't create an issue, then then it doesn't create an issue. It's just um, the person who's got to sit down and look it all back up, right, Steve? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> when we go use those culverts, uh, can't we code those to the paving project? So, I mean, we, yeah. Shane, we did a good thing when we bought them last year because they're a lot more expensive this year. Mm -hmm. So I think we, I couldn't tell you exactly how much we saved. Uh, must have saved some. And the other question adds is, well, how much are we paying for diesel fuel right now? Do you know, Dorinda? Uh, there was a bunch of, I don't have it upstairs with me, but there was diesel fuel in the orders tonight. Um, yeah. Is that still on your table down there? I'm going to go look right now. Um, let's see. Wait a minute. So Bourne's we paid, uh, let's see. Oh, Bourne's Energy. That was all LP. Um, Randy's got the thing down there. I don't know if there was something in there for diesel or not. Well, the other all thing, three, all three Bourne's bills are for LP. Right. LP. Yeah, I'd have to go back. I can look at another bill in the file. One of the last bills that we had, I think, in the orders, and I think they the price was up at four. 30 something, something in that neighborhood. It, right. I think it's over four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's with us not paying the tax on it. Isn't that correct? Mm -hmm. yep. Not being what? Paying the tax on it. The, the, the fuel. Well, tax. There's two, there's two taxes. There's one that the state implemented that we have to pay that is right. used to offset <laughs> some monies they're giving people for something and we can't get out of that tax we bought, tried to get out of it and we can but we are not paying 
sales tax, regular sales tax on anything. Well, Jen, I want to I wanted to ask the select board is that is and I don't mean any disrespect. I'm not, but is there anything that jumps out at you? I mean, I don't get to see the orders. But is there anything that jumps out at you that that seems like we're spending a lot of money for or doesn't quite look like this bill from John Deere? I, I didn't know about that till tonight. And I, I know that that probably John Deere told uh, I know John Deere told Shane that, but boy, that just does not add up very good on a brand new machine. Yeah. Absolutely. And, That's you know, I personally have run in with John Deere and they will charge you just about anything and just hope you pay for it. Now, it sounds like a broad boy, John Deere is terrible, but I mean, I'd like to follow up on that. And I mean, I would do it with Shane, to, you know, tomorrow or the next day when I can talk to him. I think that's know, a good idea. I I just can't believe it that they would, that, that they, you know, they're going to try to, I've never on a new piece of equipment no. Is it, I thought it was a year old, old now. Is it not the greater? Well, not quite, I think. No, I know. No, I mean. Uh, no, I know. I'm just wondering, did we like it? Did, did our warranty expire and it was 12 months in one day or something? No, 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 no. no we no, had no. an extended yeah. warranty in addition to the regular warranty. Oh. And it's Can I ask a question? Old. Um, Vic, on this, this makes me think of Randy's question about coding and where stuff gets coded. Um, does summer maintenance have a date that is like from this month to this month is considered summer maintenance and winter maintenance is from this month to this month? Like where does mud season fall in under winter maintenance or summer? <laughs> because our, and then our fiscal year is July 1, yeah, which is really right. summer. There's not, a, there's not a set date. I think it's more what the item is that you're paying for or what is being charged to you it, i think like, so mud mitigation would fall under i think it's under summer summer um well so mud mitigation was actually under its whole a whole separate uh, right. category than summer oh, maintenance. right but like the stone that you bought and the gravel i think that fell under winter and let me look again that's an excellent um, point it should fall under what we've bought so far should fall under mud mitigation, even though it's it's going to be in the road forever. So it could be summer gravel, but I think it's just right. what they yeah, what, like summer gravel is one hundred and six percent over budget. I mean, right. it's a six percent over budget, I right. guess. Right. Um, and uh, and that was probably stuff that we bought that went into mud mitigation. Correct. Yeah, okay. we've spent twenty thousand dollars. It says right now on mud mitigation. Right, but that is who knows. Like, because I thought what Randy said that this this season has cost us seventy to eighty thousand. Yeah, Where is that money? That's what I remember. I said I said seventy five the last meeting. Seventy five. Yeah, but where is that money? Like, where is that in this? It's mixed between mud mitigation, summer maintenance, equipment repairs, right? All that kind of stuff. Mostly, I think, yeah. Gravel, yeah. Road, road gravel and trucking um, is gravel my guess. Trucking, trucking is a big item now. We don't think much about it, but trucks, well, I think those trucks are like 92 bucks, and I think they're going to, I don't know what they're going to, but some people are trying like 100. Right. So I guess the, the point is, it, it sounds good that Shane has a folder that's like specific to this disaster that we had, um, but it does seem like it's, you know, coding is one of those things that, you know, unless you really know why you're coding, you might just randomly code to like, oh, this makes sense to code to here. Well, um, well, you're just absolutely right, Liz, in that, you know, if, you know, if we, if, if he, you know, if we're running over the budget item for, for you know, one gravel, we will put it in a, another budget item for gravel so that it, it doesn't run one way over and then we don't have anything in the other one. We, we do do that. I don't know if that's incorrect, but that's what, what happened. Well, so, so here's a prime example. Um, or if you call it, Randy, flex, flex money. 
Um, here, here's a prime example of, of, of one of the things that, that I was I was looking at was uh, so under construction yeah. uh, under the highway department's budget there's ditch stone yeah and we had a budget of sixteen hundred dollars we've spent thirty nine sixty nine but then up underneath the the summer maintenance. If you look at the ditch stone, like uh, there's stone ditch lining, we had a budget of 7812. We haven't spent a penny of it. So I'm, I, I guess my brain, you know, and there's probably a clear definition somewhere for that. But yeah. my brain just says, okay, well, if, if you've got stone under summer or, or ditch stone under summer maintenance and ditch stone under construction, okay. how, what's differentiating the two and, and we're, almost 250% over on one and we haven't even touched the other. We, 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 we'll, we'll have to look at that. We, we have to do a better job there. I think like some of that is on Baldock Road that we're using right now to, to line the ditches and line the culvert and stuff. And so that's gonna go up. That, we've just been getting that in this last couple of weeks because we had kind of a rush on it because a and R, well, not uh, Jim Ryan kind of got after us, put the pressure on us. And then Ryan McCall, who's the enforcement guy, kind of gave us a break and said, You guys are doing a good job and just let me know. So so we've been we've been going at it for at least at least two weeks. And I we figured we got, I think Shane said tonight he figured he had three to five more days over there to get that done. So, but we have. I know I was there last night and they had 14 loads of ditch stone in, in, the, in the, the town garage so that they could get it quicker and, and use it up on Baldock Road. So that won't reflect. That's still got still to be turned into, uh, into uh, Dorinda. Could I just... Can I just ask another broader question while we're on the subject? Is there a reason why we have summer and winter maintenance? I I've never, I have never understood that. I mean, why isn't it just road maintenance? maintenance? Why are we trying to just divide it up between winter and summer? I think it, I think it's because we differentiate between, you know, plowing, salting, sanding, and gravel and and uh, winter sand. Winter. winter I'm just saying, why isn't why don't why don't we have the appropriate categories and it's just all in there? Oh, well, you can. I, I, don't, I don't understand the value. All I'm saying is, well, we're while we're talking about recoding things and how we code things, yeah. why are we trying to divide it up? I mean, if we buy stone and we use some of it for mud mitigation and some of it for construction and some of it for this and some of it for that. Don't we really just need to know unless unless we're trying to get reimbursed on a grant that we spent X dollars on gravel? I don't know. I'm asking I'm just, I'm asking I think, a question because I've never understood why we put all the effort to divide it up between winter and summer. And I think there's a lot of cross a lot of cross pollination that goes on between the two, as they say. So right. There is. And I think at some point that you know, quite a while ago, somebody asked to have it separated out between you know, a lot of things, I mean, uh, you know, sand, winter sand and plowing and plows and, and all that stuff. I could, you know, they wanted it separated. That, I mean, oh, I'm, I, I'm sure that Victor, I'm sure that's what happens. All I'm <laughs> saying is, does it make sense anymore? That's my question. I think so so. I don't think it, I, for myself, I don't think it does. I don't think it adds right. any value at all to the process. And if we need a category that says winter sand, we're going to know it's winter sand. If we have a, a category which says ditching stone, yeah. we're going to know it's ditching stone. I mean, we can have categories like that which tell us what it is. But I gotta, I gotta then, for instance, we have you know we have all this winter and summer maintenance stuff, and then all the truck maintenance is broken out in another place. The labor isn't included; it's broken out in another place. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, we certainly yeah, can well, do that. I had some recollection, actually, that, that uh, Steve, when you were road commissioner, you uh, broke the budget down like that because you wanted 
of fire grain analysis to look at where we were spending the money yeah. basically seasonally. And I, I could be wrong, but I thought I thought that's where that came from. A I lot of that. There. I think it's been there forever. Well, well it, it, it has been, been but we were trying to refine it, um, you know, and we were trying to, you can ask Dorinda, we keep trying to make a category so that we're breaking things out differently. And I guess what I'd suggest is that let Victor and Shane go through this thing and give them some time to, to do this and try to come up with how they think it should and bring it to the board. Right? Mm -hmm. Because we can all second guess on all kinds of things on that. I'm gonna, I, would, I would tell you from my past experience and hopefully everybody would agree, if we're gonna do this, we should do it at the start of the fiscal year. Otherwise, it causes chaos. Right. Might, might I suggest that you wrap in uh, the finance folks with that as well? Just so that it all, you know, the. Well, well, it, what do you mean, wrap the finance folks in with that discussion on where to put stuff? No, as far as like what makes sense for like the needs of both parties, like the, the highway department may have certain needs and then the finance department may, may have certain needs. And just instead of having two separate efforts or having one come and say this, just have a sit down and say, this is what makes sense and, and go from there. Cause I, I just, I find that whenever I have to do something like that, it's easier just to include the person on the financial end, yep. right, but right up front than having the person, after. the person on the financial end like Corinda is the one thing that, that we needed from her. And she's been helping me for quite a while on this is actually helping us with the codes, what we should do with the codes, but not necessarily anything else with the budget or how to, to do any of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I, I can't see where Dorinda would be intertwined in that anymore, but maybe I'm wrong. Here's my, here's my suggestion on this folks. As much as as much as it makes sense to implement it July 1st, having had a few seconds to think about this, I think what it makes sense to implement it is when we're doing the budget, because we've already done the budget with these categories. Yeah. And we don't have a lot of time between now yeah. and July 1st to implement anything. So I think what we should do is uh, in the legislature, they would call us a summer study committee. But uh, <laughs> work on the work on this and be ready to have the new categories in force when we do our budget next fall and then it gets implemented july 1st the following year when that when that budget is effective yep. the other thing the other just comment i would make just quickly and i'll recognize you dorinda is you know when it comes to figuring out what we spend and what we spend what we spend in the summer and what we spend in the winter it's easy enough to look at the month by month reports and see where we're spending the money. You know, I mean, you, you look at what we, you look at what we spend on all these things from, from December 1st until May 1st, that pretty much gives you the, gives you the winter maintenance and what we spend the rest of the year is the summer maintenance. I don't know. I just don't think the winter summer thing brings a lot of value. But anyway, my recommendation would be that we, work on it over the summer, get ready to implement it if we're gonna make changes at budget time and then make the new accounts effective a year from July 1st. I think trying to do it between now and July 1st is gonna be impossible and it's gonna screw up our budget. We're gonna to have to redo the budget yeah. and all that stuff. And it's already been approved by the voters with those categories. Yeah. I agree, I think that's a good idea, Peter. So I think we've, I think we've beaten a dead horse on the subject unless, unless uh, I think they're all good comments. I think it's a good, we haven't, we haven't, I can't ever remember. I can remember us adding accounts and maybe deleting a few random accounts, but I don't ever remember in my reign on the budget committee and on the select board that we ever really looked at the chart of accounts and said, you know, we changed around how we do the payroll. Yes, Doreen. I, I think this year's problem is one person created the budget for this current year and the other person, another person is coding out for the current year. So I don't think they know how that budget came about, what was included in those numbers when the budget was made. So I think that's the biggest problem affecting this year. Um, and I think, but to Victor's point, I mean, I have maybe 
two people should be signing off on these bills or do we send juice? I mean, the problem is, is when I send these edit lists out, they're already done. Right. So, you know, it's kind of like backing up, you know, that maybe for a while, you know, we have two people sign off on those that or normally the bills are signed off. I mean, we do them mostly on Monday mornings, but um you know, if there's another way that we can get these to Victor or something or him and Shane sit down and code them out together. But I do, you know, there's, I hate to send it to you afterwards because it's already done unless we go back and recode stuff. And that's the problem. And something you said even earlier is we can't go back and change the coding on something that's in a previous year. I can do it all in the current year budget. But once we cross over that July 1st, I can't go back and change right. it. Mm. So those the, are just things to keep in mind. On this report that you give us while we're talking about this budget report, um, is there, if it's easy, does the software allow you to maybe at the total under each category, like total government, total insurances, whatever, um, does it... Is there a column that you can put, which is the percentage of the year remaining, especially because like sometimes this is like through a certain time period that way we can say like, OK, we've used 84 percent of our budget. And um, but we're only 50 percent of the year through or something like that or total amount of the year already um, accounted for. Does that That's software what do that? Well, That's what each line is. item is. So if you yeah. look at any particular line item, if you wanted to go back to the very first page, yeah, you know, um, let's just take you know select board wages. The budget was three thousand seven hundred and fifteen dollars. We've actually paid out three thousand five hundred forty six fifty two. So that we're at ninety percent of that line item. No, I, so, I know. I'm thinking more about things like. Um, Remaining time left. The remaining time left, right. Well, we, so yeah. wages are sort of not, it would be more like we spent this much on sand and, but we still have six months left, right? What's the remaining time left? Well, that tells you at the top of the report, we're in current budget year 10. There's only 12 budgets. So, you know, you've got two left. Yeah. All we have to do is a little bit of math and we yeah. do that ourselves. No, I know. Right. I just I find it in my own budgeting work at work very helpful to see, like, especially on things like um, you know, with grant amounts that, oh, I'm overspending this grant because I because I, you know, I've already spent 60% of the grant, but I still have 70% of the year left or whatever. You know, that but, all, but all I think we're trying to say, Liz, and I'm not I'm not trying to give you a hard time, but let, let's say just to make it simple, let's say the year is three quarters done instead mm -hmm. of 10 twelfths done. So it's 75 yeah. percent. Well, I would look at the report and I would say, OK, if it's a pro rata expense, we should be at 75 percent yeah. of our annual expenditures. The other problem is many of these categories and I'll use winter sand as a good example. You know, we spend 100% of that when we put up our when we put up our winter sand in the fall and we don't spend any the rest of the year. So, unless you're going to go through a very complicated budget process where we don't, you know, we we break out the amounts by month, so we put all the winter sand in, we put the no, it's fine. It's, it actually helps. I didn't even notice that thing at the top. That's helpful to me that we're in period 10. Like, I don't think I've ever known that that's what that even meant. Yeah. So yeah. that's helpful so that to me you. to look at this, to say, okay, we have two months left, May and June. Peter, I, I, I've got to get going. I was going to try to leave 15 minutes ago, but uh, I do have to leave. Oh, he's- He's on the phone. All right. <laughs> Bye, Steve. All right. God. Peter, Bye. Peter, I've got to leave. So uh, okay. I don't think we've got too much left that 
No, we need to we need to wrap up our meeting. You don't have anything on any of the minutes, right? No. Okay. We okay. Need to well, we need to wrap it. It's it's after seven o'clock. We need to we need to wrap this up. I think that I think that was a good discussion. I think we just need to remember to follow up, and we need to remember to follow up. And I wrote myself a note on uh, on Shane's concern. As much as I think we. Uh, we we know what we want to do. I think we just need yeah. to. I want to read the minutes and then make a decision uh, at the next board meeting. Are you all set, Dorinda? You need anything well, else? So do you do you, what do you want me to do with orders for Victor? Does he want to you know review them before they're paid? Or I mean, you guys bring up ideas, but there's never you know. Well, here's here's what I would suggest. You know, we're two months we're two months from the year end. I would say whatever the new practice is going to be, we implement it July first. But that's just me. If you want to, if you want to implement it on an interim basis as a treasurer, that's fine with me. What do you think, Victor? I want a six. I want a, a, a sign-on bonus. <laughs> <laughs> we are we I are continuing. How do you do? I can't eat too. I can. I think that's right. I'll start fresh and, and and I'll just look at them. And if I have any questions, I'll bring it up to Shane. And if we have any questions, we'll bring it up to the board. Okay. That work for you, Dorinda? Yeah. It's so you want me to send you the edit list after it's done, like I send the select board. No, I think the idea is look, have him look at the invoices and how they're coded before you do the edit list. So you're not going okay, back. Okay, well then he needs to get together with Shane on that because when they once they reach our desk, they get posted as coded. Right. Yep. I can cut him off at the pass. There you, there go. Right. There you go. Sounds like a deal. Okay, thank you. Okay. See you, Steve. Have a good night, Steve. Good night, Steve. Good night. Good night. Okay, we need to approve our April 19th and April 26th minutes. If there are no changes, I would suggest we make one motion. Yeah. I'll move. Okay. I'll second. second, Phil? Okay. Yeah. It's been moved and seconded to approve the April 19th and April 26th minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, we have orders down at the town clerk's office to sign. I'll be down tomorrow, Dorinda. Me too. Okay, I've got two already, so. Okay, yeah. and we need to sign that. We also need to sign that uh, town highway report thing, right? Yeah. Yep, that's in there, yep. Okay, is there anything else in there? Nope, those are the only, there's something waiting that you've already signed that we're waiting for somebody else to come in and sign. Okay, okay. Um, Martha or Margaret Schwartz? Oh, oh the, the Margaret other Schwartz has to sign it or something. Well, yeah. Okay. Or just when you when you go down there to sign, and I've made the mistake too. Make sure you look at everything in there because I've missed things in the past too. Mm -hmm. um, here we go. Discussion of returning to in-person select board meetings. COVID is on the rise. Yeah, I don't think we should in Washington County. I think we. Yeah. I mean, maybe we'll be able to July first. I don't know, but I think this is the wrong time when things yeah. are going in the wrong direction. Yep. So unless anybody disagrees, I say we continue with our yeah. remote meetings, correspondence. I'm sure we don't have any. Anybody have anything else for tonight? So we are you going to readdress that in 30 days? Is that what you're going to do? What was our thing that we said? Didn't we say we would address it every first, so often? The first yeah, meeting of every month. Yeah. You said every month? Yeah. yeah. Let's say let's say 30 days. Sure. Yeah. I just don't, I, you know, I was thinking we should do it. And then, you know, I've listened to all the stuff over the last week. It seems like we waited this long, which we should be doing it now. Yeah. These new strains are supposedly 10 times more infectious than the old strains, for Christ's sake. And at first, it was only a couple of counties. And I think all of Vermont now is in the high contagion category. And Washington County is one of the highest. It is, yes. Yeah. And there's the highest vaccinated too. Yeah. That's yeah. I can't figure that well, one out. I know. How does that work out? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um anything else, anyone? No. Okay, then I am going Good to adjourn the meeting. Thank you all once again for your time and attention.
Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye. Have a good evening. Have a good night. Bye.